are able, and, oh, I keep saying give an attribute, but you could also, you know, at them, you could say this user has access to this service or this user. You don't have to use attributes, but you can. I can. I, let me see if that. I've got this right, Clint. It sounds like the difference between roles and attributes is that is what I know at the time that I'm writing the policy. If I'm writing a role policy, then I can say, here's some permissions. I want to associate these with some entities. So I have to know about the permissions and entities before I can write the policy. With attributes, I need I can describe what kind of entities I want to grant what kinds of permissions to in advance. And For sure. If those things ever pop into existence, then they'll have those permissions. That's exactly right. And so that, that, that is a big benefit of the attribute-based access control is they don't have to exist for you to make the policy. So like Ken said, if if I you know add an edge router called bananas or and I give it a, 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 a policy that says, hey, anybody who has an edge router with an attribute named banana, when you know the identity Clint shows up, he can connect to the banana edge router. I can like make that I policy in, um, before Instagram before or, or Twitter and subscribe to a hashtag and say, I want to know about this thing. If somebody's talking right. about it, I want to read about it and it doesn't yeah. have to exist yet. I can find out later. Yep. 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 